welcome to Alzheimer's Speaks Radio. I'm your host, Lori LeBay, and I'm so excited that you're joining us today. We are going to have a fascinating conversation, as usual, as we learn from people all around the world at all ages and stages of life. Stay tuned as we shift our dementia care from crisis to comfort. Here we go. What you think about Well, hi, everyone, and welcome to Alzheimer Speaks. I'm thrilled you are joining us today. We are going to be talking with Coral Health, who has been a guest on our show in the past, and they are just doing marvelous, marvelous work. And today we're going to be talking about that intersection of music, neuroscience, and healthcare. And boy, is that a topic to be had. I would also like to encourage people to go to alzheimerspeaks.com, check out all of our free educational resources, um, and also go to Dementia Map, our global resource directory as well. Um, there you'll find over 150 categories that you can search. It's free to use, and we're not going to ask you for any personal information as well. And upcoming shows uh, that I want to mention to you on March 1st, we are going to be doing a tribute for Naomi File, who has really been the godmother of dementia. She passed away on December 24th. And if you'd like to honor her, please join us. Also on February 29th, I'll be interviewing Donna DeVillers from Scotland, who's doing some really great stuff. All of that information you can find right on our homepage at Alzheimer Speaks to figure out how to connect with us on those things. So let's go ahead and introduce you to Dave Shelfman with Coral Health. David, I'm so excited to have you back on the show. It's It's been quite a while, and mm -hmm. um, I've been impressed with your work at Coral Health, you know, from the first time we talked. I, I just think it's absolutely amazing. I know you got a lot of new stuff going on, but I'm going to start out by having you introduce yourself because you can do a much better job than I can, if you don't mind. Yeah, so uh, thanks again for having me back, and it has been a while, and obviously we follow your work and um, are just continue to be impressed by everything that you've done and everything that you do do for the industry and for so many people, and so thank you first and foremost, but I'm David Schoffman with Coral Health, and um, we've been uh, been in business for 15 years now, if you can believe that. It's hard to hard to imagine, but yeah, I... Uh, I'm very, very, very glad to be here and talk about what we're doing and learn a little bit about what you're up to as well. How did you get into this field? Were you touched by dementia in your own family or circle of friends or? Yeah, you know, it's 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 a long story, but I will uh, I will do the abbreviated version here, as you know. But, um, you know, it kind of it, you know, it all matured out of, you know, the beginning of Coral Health. Right. And, um, you know, the the impetus for Coral Health really came through a couple of convergence of a couple of things coming together. So one is uh, my passion for music, which, as I've shared with you, I'm an amateur musician. And that's being very generous with the uh, with the word amateur. Um, but I play guitar and sing a little bit. And um, so first of all, was my passion for music. Secondarily was, you know, my middle daughter's a special needs kid. And when she was young and my wife and I were trying to you know, do what parents do and, and search for answers, we we stumbled across the field of music therapy and, and candidly had never even heard of it or knew anything about it. And and we enrolled my daughter in there and we started seeing some really magical transformation with her through the power of music and music in, in the brain and how it was working with her. And, um, and then at the same time, my mom's been a hospice nurse for, was for almost 50 years. And, uh, and she worked with individuals with Alzheimer's and dementia and it shared, you know, so many wonderful stories about how she used music um, as part of her care plan. And she literally, you'll laugh at this, but uh, I'll, I'll, I'll age both of us here when I tell you the story. But um, she actually used to go around with uh, Sony Discmans, if you remember those, in the trunk of her car <clears throat> and several hundred um, CDs. And as part of establishing a care plan with an individual, and she would go, she was a, she was a home uh, hospice nurse. And so when she, as part of the care plan, when she arrived on site and started working with them, she'd find out what kind of music they liked. And she would literally leave CDs there and with the family to, to be playing different types of music with her. 
with them. And, um, and then when they passed, she'd obviously pick them up and she would tell stories of all these amazing stories about, you know, when certain songs would come on and how people would come to life and how, you know, through their end of life care, how it was such a powerful tool. And, um, and then when we got into starting Coral Health, which as you recall, we, um, you know, we just decided there's got to be a better way than, 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 than kind of the traditional form that music therapists were doing. Not that they don't do amazing work. They do do amazing work. And, and we're very grateful for all of the music therapists that work with us, you know, every day. But, you know, unfortunately, there's only five or 6,000 of them that are certified in the United States and the world for that matter. And, um, you know, it's not a lot of times it's not covered by insurance. And so it's expensive. And so we just figured there's got to be a way to bring therapeutic music to individuals without a music therapist, um, you know, always present, unfortunately. And so, you know, we put together a team of music therapists, music designers and neuroscientists and kind of put them in a room and said, you know, can we create a can we create a, a tool for caregivers and, you know, to use when there's not a music therapist available to them. And so to answer your question, really, you know, our first, I don't even know, probably 50 to 100 customers we're all in memory care and dementia care. And that's just kind of where we cut our teeth. And, and you know, we used to spend, you know, days and weeks and months uh, inside these communities and working with individuals that had, you know, different forms of Alzheimer's dementia and, and related disorders. And, um, you know, there was thousands of individuals whose lives we were touching. And, and obviously stories that I could tell you for hours about some of the, the amazing things that we saw coming out of that journey. So that's when it really hit home to me and we realized, you know, we've got, uh, we've got a community of people here that we can really do a lot of good with. And, um, you know, we've got to continue to fight for them and, and make the product better. Wow. Well, and that is so important that, you know, I was just interviewing somebody from the Davos uh, Alzheimer's collaborative and they were talking about, you know, neurologists and how there's not enough of them. And you're talking about music therapists and there's not enough of them. I mean, there's such a lack in what we need in terms of staff to really help support people. So I'm so glad that, you know, you got creative and created Coral Health because it's helped so many people in so many different areas. And I, and I also love that you applied your daughter who has a, a disability. Music affects all of us. And I think it's something that we all take for granted. We don't really right. understand the power of how it changes our moods and, and all of that. It's, it's pretty miraculous. And yeah. again, we enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know, we're all kind of our own music therapists, right? I mean, mm -hmm. you use music and on a daily basis, just like I do. And so many, you know, almost everyone in the world does. And, and, you know, as we get older, and unfortunately, those especially that are affected with some sort of brain, you know, injury and or, you know, you know God forbid, you know, get Alzheimer's or some form of dementia, you know, you lose that ability sometimes to, you know, to be able to be your own therapist anymore. And so part of our job is, you know, through music and memories is trying to figure out, you know, what is that, what's going to trigger that autobiographical response in people, you know, and when you, when you do it and you do it right, you know, it's incredible. Um, you know, I mean, you've, you've, we've shared with you some of the stories of individuals that we have that were, you know, even nonverbal and completely uncommunicative and combative and how our caregivers use music to, you know, basically wake them up again, you know, and for a certain amount of time. And, um, you know, it's a, it's a gorgeous, beautiful thing. It's just heartwarming for all of us when we hear these stories um, because it's, um, you know, it, it, it truly transforms people's lives and something as simple as music that you say, like you said, that we use all day, every day in our lives, but you just don't, uh, you know, it's when I started the company, I certainly had no idea you know, that, that music impacts, you know, literally every region of the brain, you know, and I've shared some of those, those stories and some of the neuroscience behind that is just it really is incredible. And the knowledge of that's been around for a long, long time, but it hasn't really been discussed publicly where the average Joe understands the power of the music. I have bought um, oh, old music from the, the 60s, 70s, and the 80s. That's kind of my genre. And my grandkids, you know, always like, well, 
you know, name a fan, if, uh, you know, one of your favorite bands or something. And I'm like, oh, I, you know, I liked Brad. I liked Hall and Oates. And, oh, those are goofy names. And then they listen to my music and tell me how silly it is. I said, but it just, it calms me down. It, right. you know, brings me right back in sync. And, the, you know, my whole family knows if, if I get dementia, do not, no matter what, if I get it or not, do not get rid of all those CDs. <laughs> <laughs> you know, keep my CD player and my CDs. Right. Go ahead and download them and things. But, you know, I want that music with me because I know the power of it. And, yeah. um, you know, why, why replace it, you know, later on and stuff when I can, when I can handpick, you know, what it is that I like. But I think most of us don't really think about that, you know, ahead of time. And, yeah. um, Though you do get a lot of people who are doing playlists and things, but but I don't think they think of it long term in terms of what it does to right. people. Um, yeah. Let's talk about you know supporting individuals with Alzheimer's disease or or other forms of dementia. When do you try to get your your product in their hand? And and well, maybe we should talk about the product itself because you have a lot of different genres that you offer as well. We do. Yeah. No, it's, you know, unfortunately for, you know, usually, you know, there's somewhere, you know, down the path before we, you know, get engaged. I mean, we do, as you know, support individuals on a wide range of the, of, of the care spectrum, you know, from assisted living all the way down through hospice and everything in between. Um, but those with, with Alzheimer's and dementia, you know, we're generally, by the time that we're engaged with them, they're generally somewhere along in the disease process, right? And for some of them, you know, they're able to verbalize to us, you know, what it is that they like and what it is that they want. And others, you know, it's, it's a little bit of a, of a matchmaking process, you know, where we go through and we ask a series of questions. And, you know, through that, we scroll down through to you know, what is the, what is the genre? What is the style right, the, of music that they want and, and that we feel like is going to really impact them? And, and then a lot of it is doing interviews with family members, you know, and trying to understand, you know, just like you just said, what is it that, that mom or dad or brother or sister, you know, used to listen to, you know, and it has to do with not only, you know, sometimes, you know, their age, which is, you know, relatively easy from a, from a genre perspective but also where they grew up i mean you know if you grew up in new york city and you know the, the the musical brain is kind of formed between 12 and 20 and so where were you in those formative years and what we, what were you listening to and just because you know if you grew up in the south like i did in texas it's probably very different music than somebody who grew up in new york city or california or whatever and so you know finding out what that is and drilling down and finding you know using the word that you use you know being able to build that playlist for them is is you know it's it's the key part to being able to open up you know that part of the brain and and you know you mentioned this earlier that you know there's not um enough information and knowledge and caregivers you know that really understand the science but you know it was really only in the last you know 10 or 15 years with, with functional imaging that we could really start to see you know how the brain reacts when there's different types of music that are being played and um, I'm sure you know the famous story by now, and some of your listeners probably do as well, of, you know, Dr. Sachs and, and, you know, the movie that he put out and, you know, being able to show, you know, him listening to Bach versus Beethoven, you know, it's such a great story because I can't remember if it was Bach or Beethoven was his, was his favorite uh, uh, musician between the two, but one of them he liked and the other one he really didn't like, right? And so, you know, they had him on the fMRI machine and they're watching his brain why he's listening to Bach and why he's listening to Beethoven and, and with one, his brain would light up and the other one, it wouldn't. And the interesting part was they can, when they confused him and they put on two different songs, one by Bach and one by Beethoven that were very similar. And he couldn't tell the difference between them to his, just from his ear, but one, his brains continued to light up and the other one, it didn't. So even at the deepest level, you know, when you're not even conscious of something that you're listening to, you know, that, that, that resonates with your brain, it, it still is showing those positive kind of reactions and reinforcements, which is really amazing and cool to think about. If you, you know, if you take a step back, it's really pretty incredible. It, it is. Now, if I remember correctly, you had some kind of technology behind the, the average music out there. Is that something you're still doing? It is. Yeah. So we, um, you know, we break down, you know, every song into its, Debbie likes to call this, so you know who works with me, into our uh, 
into its musical DNA. So we break down the music into about 20 different um, subcategories. And we're looking at everything from, you know, at a high level, we're looking at tempo, we're looking at, you know, tonal clarity, we're looking at brightness, we're looking at a bunch of different musical characteristics. And then we take that and we cross-reference it with, you know, the individual's uh, uh, background, their medical condition, their musical preferences. And then we are adding and subtracting music based on what that individual's needs are. We even actually even remove lyrics, you know, based on, you know, if, if someone has a an interest in certain types of, of lyrics or a disinterest, you know, if it's politics or religion or violence or whatever it is, you know, we have the ability to remove those, you know, or if they're suffering from depression, um, you know, I always kind of make the joke and it is exactly tongue in cheek, but, you know, it pretty much counts out all country music, right? So um, anything about death or die. So, um, but, but it is, it's a, it's a bad exaggeration, but, but you get the point in that, that is, you know, we're looking at everything down to even lyrical analysis um, and then, you know, matching that up with the individual. And that's what we call our, our music prescription builder, which is part of our patented technology that you were referring to. Okay. Wow, that, you know, for me, I'm just a novice. I like music. I'm lucky I can even remember a band's name or a song title. I just know if I like it or not in the background. And I've, I've always been like that. And to hear all the different levels that you can break it down in, it just, you know, it kind of fascinates me because I don't, I always get the package, you know, together. Right, right. And I, I've never really thought about breaking down, pulling this out or pulling that out and, and things um now, and it's really based on the outcome Lori, that you're trying to drive right i mean so you know i should have said that initially is that you know we focus on wake sleep energy and relax you know those are the four main categories that we look at and um you know basically what the music prescription builder does is if you're trying to take someone with an energy program for example so let's just say that they have you know, they have a rehabilitation coming up in 30 minutes or even a, 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 you know, a meal coming up and you've got to get them from, you know, a lower mental state to a more energetic state so that they can be transitioned, you know, and, and they can enjoy their meal. So taking them from, from point A and over the course of, let's just say, five or 10 songs, moving them up, moving them up in tempo, moving it up in vocalization and instrumentation. And so, you know, consciously or subconsciously, you know, you're increasing their heart rate, you're increasing respiratory rate, and you're trying to get them so that when the caregiver comes and it's time to transition them, they're in a better energetic state, right? And so the, the opposite would be true on a relaxed program when you're trying to meet them where they are, which is at a high, you know, intensive state right now, and you're trying to slowly take them down through a progression. So that, that progression is a big part of what we do as well. So you take that and you mix it with the songs, and now you've got the right songs, in the right order, taking them to the right outcome. And that's really what you're trying to accomplish. Well, and that's a, that's a great thing to know. I mean, I, I think of my, the example of my grandkids, you know, sometimes they get a little riled up before bedtime and it's like, don't be listening to that or don't be doing that activity. <laughs> you're supposed to right. be calming that's down. Good. And, you know, so it applies to, I think, all of us at all ages and stages of life. Right. Um, we're just able to control that you know, a little bit more. Um, and again, I think a lot of times it's unconsciously right. how we, how we um, use music and stuff. So I, I just, I find it really interesting. I also find interesting is that even though it's for, you know, the patient or the person being diagnosed or whoever this musical prescription is for, it also helps others around them. You know, sure. especially if there's agitation and things like that, or someone just trying to do their job and getting somebody either to bed or in the shower or down for a meal, it makes life easier for everyone. And I think that that's something that isn't discussed enough either, that people right. understand that impact. You're right. And, you know, it's interesting that you bring that up because, you know, one of the key elements as you know, we've, I'll back up just a second. One, one of the, the, the key elements of our clinical work has always been focusing on what can we do to impact caregiver burden, right? And, and so, you know, our phase one clinical trial that we did over a decade ago, you know, we weren't directly measuring that. We didn't even think about it, to be honest. We were focused on agitation and depression in the individual, of which, as you know, we were very successful at accomplishing. 
our current phase two clinical trial, which we're working on right now at the NIH, is one of the requirements for working with those with AD and, 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 and related disorders is that it does, and you have to measure the impact of caregiver burden. So we're looking at agitation, depression, of course, just like we were before. We're looking at movement, respiratory rate, and then caregiver burden, you know, fits right up there. And so it has to be measured. And so the good news is that, you know, it's starting to get that type of attention because I don't have to tell you and your audience, you know, how stressful it is and, you know, how it, how it spills over. And so, you know, part of what we do is obviously to help the individual, you know, to help the patient and, 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 and try to get them, as I said, from one state to another. But that so much impacts the caregiver and there's so much stress that's put on them. And, um, you know, and they care so much about the individual that they're working with. And, you know, even though the music we always say, it's kind of a, a funny anecdote, is that in a lot of our, one of our most um, used programs is specifically for sundowning. Mm -hmm. And so our sundowning programs are extremely popular. And, you know, they are very Pavlovian in nature. You know, they are the same, in a lot of places, we play the exact same programs at the exact same time of day, right? Because again, it does become Pavlov and they know when this comes on, it's time to start settling down and working towards, you know, what the evening activities are or even towards bedtime. But it's all about reducing anxiety and, and agitation. Well, because of the, the state of the individuals that we're working with, you know, they may or may not, you know, directly recall that program from the day before. And so, you know, when it's played over and over, sometimes the caregivers will reach out and just say, enough already, you know, we have to hear this one more time. But then we remind them, this isn't for you, right? This is, you know, in that case, right? I mean, this is, and then they remind us, they're like, you're right, this really works. It's the right thing to do. But if I have to listen to Yanni one more time, I don't know what I'm going to do. But um, but yeah, no, but it is, um, it is obviously is designed to, to support the caregivers. And it's a big part of what we do. You know, I remember when my mom was in the nursing home and I approached the um, executive director and uh, I said I wanted to buy handheld shower heads for all the bathrooms. And the reason was I learned something through Tipa Snow um, where she said we lose our fat pads and stuff. And and um, Doug says he just kind of shakes his head. He's like, y you have this uncanny knack of coming in just at the right time. He, he pulls out a blueprint and he's like, what else would you like in the bathrooms? You know, and one of the things that I had mentioned, you know, on top of that was color and heated floors and all these different things was right. music. And, right. and I said, you know, if you could get the right music pumped in and even a little aromatherapy to calm things down. And I said, ideally, I'd love to have the staff learn the words so that everybody right. can sing together. But that is, it's such a little thing with such a huge impact. I mean, it's just such a massive, massive impact in terms of how music can be leveraged and, you know, how you can have, how you can have fun and calmness and joy instead right. of frustration or anxiety um, or, you know, people not sleepy. I mean, there, it, it goes on and on and on, you know, with so many of these things. And um, it, it's just such important work that you're doing. Thank now, you. in terms of, you know, people purchasing this, um, uh, you know, what do they do? What do you, how do you offer this to individuals or do you just sell it to communities and, and hospice and home health care? Why don't you let our audience know how that works? Yeah. So that's a great question. So there's, um, first of all, you're talking about seeing, so I want to touch on that really quickly because it is a, a new product that we introduced about, I don't know, I guess about nine months ago, that's become very popular, which is our senior sing-along, which is, you know, about a thousand songs that are specifically curated, you know, for, for individuals in, in, in these conditions. And so, you know, bringing together those groups to sing is, is, is obviously a huge thing and a big part of what we're doing in, in trying to, you know, take karaoke to another, to another level and make it a little bit more therapeutic uh, in nature. Um, but yeah, so we offer, you know, that product is available through, well, let me step back and answer most of your question here. So we primarily sell through long-term care communities, and that's basically where we started. We've got 
over 6,000 locations that use our service now, which is hard to believe considering our, our little humble beginnings uh, out of my garage. But um, yeah, we have 6,000 locations using our, 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 our services today. Um, and that's predominantly both our music product and our faith product, along with the uh, with the sing along product that I mentioned to you a minute ago. So we sell through through those communities. And so at home, we offer the sing along product as well as our faith first product. So music first is the name of our is our music product, and that's because we train individuals on using the music first as part of their care plan versus pharmacological or other types of intervention, and then faith first as well. Um, which we cover, as you know, it's a multi-faith tool where we, we cover seven different uh, um, denominations of faith and spirituality, um, you know, with, with our content. So that can be purchased individually as well. And then we have, you know, this new bundle product that I've told you about where we're bringing together a bunch of our partners as well and being able to sell that both in homes and in, in long-term care communities. Well, that's really exciting to hear all of that and to see how much you've expanded since when we first talked. That's just absolutely incredible. Yeah, the spirituality piece of it has really become popular, Lori. And, you know, it was um, it was a challenge when we when we started this product. We literally started Faith First 10 years ago. And, and you know, the history there and, and you know, individuals in these, um, or I should say, administrative people in our long term care uh, care communities, even those that specialize in, in Alzheimer's and dementia, you know, they, uh, unfortunately, the uh, the lawyers got involved in most of this and were, were stopping the growth of that product because they were just so concerned about being sued, which is just absolutely ridiculous. So, um, you know, and, and here we were providing this great tool to support individuals that were displaced from their, you know, their, their place of worship. And, you um, you know, especially those who have Alzheimer's and dementia, um, you know, it's such a huge part, obviously, of, of in so many cases of where they came from. And you talk about, you know, triggering memories and, and something that comforts them. Anyway, it took a, it took all the way up until COVID, to be honest with you, until all of a sudden the barriers came down and all of a sudden our phones started ringing off the hook and everybody was like, you know, because they had no more volunteers, they had no more way to transport people on the weekends, you know, to their place of worship. And, um, you know, even pastoral care, you know, was limited, right. And, um, you know, chaplains weren't allowed in the building. And so, you know, that's when the phone, you know, really started ringing, as I said, with with Faith First, and, and we really expanded that product line, and, um, and started bringing it to more and more people. And, you know, we have a weekly mass now, you know, we have Bible studies, educational content, you know, two different forms of the Bible, you know, and then we have, you know, in addition to Christianity and Judaism and Buddhism, we have Islamic, we have Native American. So we're trying to support, you know, multiple dimensions of faith there and, and uh, you know, through inspirational content and meditations. And um, we have an entire wisdom council that oversees all of the content and, and makes sure that we, you know, are putting out our very best uh, uh, efforts on what we can provide people. But, um, but yes, it has come a very, very long way to answer your, uh, your point. Well, it's too bad. Those legal beavers get in the way sometimes, <laughs> you know, it just, it's so was crazy. Sad. I and, know. And I mean, everyone talks about, you know, this holistic healing and, and faith is such a big part of people's lives. Yeah. And, you know, we need to, we need to put that in the mix. If you are just uh, hopping on right now, we are talking with Jay Shelfman with uh, Coral Health. And we've been talking about this integration of music and neuroscience and just living better and what an impact it can have on not only someone uh, diagnosed or dealing with a form of dementia, but also the care partners and those around them uh, that are serving them as well. You can always go to their website, which is coralhealth.com. They are also on Facebook. Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn, and Twitter, or X. I, I'll never call it X. I don't, <laughs> I don't think um, any of us will get that right. And uh, all of that is in the in the show notes as well. We are going to hear a little bit about QBlock, and we will be right back. I also want to introduce you all to QBlock. They have been absolutely 
excellent to deal with. They have been in business for 18 years and they serve the globe. I can't say enough good things about this company. I've had a lot of bad experiences. I don't know about you with tech companies. They have made a very complicated process very easy and their staff is so kind, so polite, so respectful to work with and you know, when I am frustrated and ready to pull my hair out, they just smile and tell me everything's going to be okay. And they really are just on top of the communication, which alleviates so much stress as an owner when you're dealing with tech issues. You can get a 10% discount. Visit them at QBlocks at C U E. B L O C K S dot com, or you can email them at let's talk at qblocks.com. For that 10% discount, just put Lori, L O R I, in the inquiry form. And again, I don't think you'll be disappointed. I surely haven't been. I, I can't rave enough about this company. And that's kind of rare these days. So Dave, I want to talk to you. You had mentioned, you know, you had done some uh, trials in the past. Do you have any that you're in the thick of right now or uh, plans for the future? Yeah. So we're right in the middle of our phase two um, clinical trials, which I alluded to a little bit earlier. So our first clinical trial we did 10 years ago um, focused on agitation and depression and, and the results have been published and peer reviewed in, in the uh, Journal of Music and Medicine. And, you know, we showed reductions of, in agitation of up to 54% with those with Alzheimer's and dementia. And so it was just an incredible success. Uh, we were thrilled with it. Um, but we also knew there was a lot more work to do. We were still at the very beginning of building out our music prescription builder. We knew there was other things that we needed to be measuring besides, you know, just agitation and depression, which is why in our phase two clinical trial that we're working on right now, uh, we're expanding that scope, you know, significantly. First of all, we're going from two communities to 20 locations, um, which is going to be a massive undertaking. This is going to be about a two and a half year endeavor for us to do this. And so in addition to agitation and depression, uh, you know, we're going to be looking at movement. We're going to be looking at, you know, uh, increasing appetite. We're going to be looking at looking at changes in respiratory rate. Um, and then, of course, as I mentioned earlier, we're really going to be focused heavily on reduction of caregiver burden. And, and so that's really what our big focus is going to be in this phase, too. Wow, that's that's really interesting. Um, you know, when you mentioned movement, one of the things I will just mention, because I love this story, but I had one couple that utilized music every morning when they got out of bed and every night before they went to bed and their ritual was that they would dance and they would dance to the music that they loved. And one person was going blind and the other partner had dementia, Oh wow! but it, but it gave them that physical contact that so right. often is missed. And it, you know, it just brought them both back to a happier place. And I think, I think one of the things that, that music can do, and I don't know if there's been any studies on this, but I saw it with my own mom where she would have more lucid moments with music right. and just be so in sync for a longer period of time. Um, it was really kind of fascinating. But I think, you know, when, when we're able to calm the brain down and let it relax, um, it's easier probably to sort things out. And that's one of the things I hear from my, um, my guests on Dementia in the Arts is when they are, when they're in the zone, their symptoms decrease. And it seems like that's exactly what music is doing as well. And I, I just, gosh, I just wish everybody understood that, you know, the yeah. power behind the arts. Yeah, it's a, it's kind of a life journey, right, for us. And and you know, like I mentioned earlier in 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 the session, is you know when you when you trigger that right song or those, that right group of songs, it makes such a enormous impact. And the thing is, you know, it's so it's so easy to do that, you know. And in 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 our in the medical community anyway, and it's getting so much better. And you've seen this over the last couple of decades of doing all the great work that you do. Is that 
you know, it's always been this first reaction and, and, and it's what they've been trained on in medical school too, is, you know, they just go to the med cart and it's just, there's so many better, I shouldn't say better, there's different ways to address, you know, someone when they're in an acute situation and, you know, whether that's through music, whether that's through, you know, just regular engagement, you know, with them and listening to them and working with them, whether it's through art, you know, whether it's through movement, you know, just as simple as movement sometimes, you know, there's just, there's just so many alternatives. And, you know, a lot of the stuff that was kind of frou-frou-y and voodoo-y and all this other sort of stuff, you know, 20 years ago is now becoming more mainstream. It really is. And, you know, you see this in, you know, all it's, you know, this whole wellness movement that's going on. And, and I think that, you know, this next generation, you know, our generation that's going to be, you know, going into long-term care or some sort of, you know, uh, um, you know, life journey of our own as we age, you know, I think that, you know, it's, it's changing the mentality towards, you know, this, these alternative forms of care is changing. I think there's a demand for it. There's more um, movement in the insurance industry to supporting it. Um, which is all going to validate, you know, that this is real. Um, I mean, we're seeing this even when we talked earlier about Faith First. We talked about, you know, the, you know, for the first time coming out of COVID, you know, the uh, CMS codes were released for pastoral care in the VA. I mean, we're like, whoa, what? wait, they're considering reimbursement for spiritual support? Like, what's happening? I mean, this is fantastic news, you know? And, and so um, I think there is a movement that's going on, but it's... Uh, it never feels like it can go fast enough. Oh, I agree. <laughs> I totally agree. And I think the kids are being taught in school different things, too. I remember taking my um, two granddaughters for a walk, and one was riding her scooter, and she, like, popped off her scooter, just popped off, and then she sat on the ground cross-legged with her, with her hands like this and went, um, and she started meditating just out of, out of nowhere. And it was like, what are you doing? She's like, I'm meditating. I just need a little calmness. I just, it was just the perfect spot, grandma. Yeah. Uh, that is so <laughs> and, awesome. That I is, know. And they're yeah. very in tune to their likes and their dislikes and what's going on. And, right. and um, you know, they, they too love music and, right. you know, it's fun to see them get in their zones and, um, and really appreciate that. And I yeah. see the, I see the calmness. I, I still have this old, you know, because I'm I'm 64 now, so I have I have the grandma mode of turn the lights on and turn the music off and do your homework. But I remember doing the exact same thing and being able to concentrate right, and right. didn't have a problem at all. And I'm like, okay, I got to let that go because I did I did the same thing and I could see fine, I could do my homework fine, but I was just in the zone. Right. And um, and sometimes we get a little judgy with that stuff, I think. Right, right. You know, and, and 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 what works for one person is so different than what works for another person. I always tell the story. I I played golf in high school and in college, and there was a guy on my golf team. And again, I'm dating myself because we had tapes and you know, big wires and headphones on. But um, he used to listen when we would go and warm up to play golf. You know, I'm listening to classical music or, or you know. Maybe maybe I would get crazy every once in a while, you know, and, and listening to, I don't know, some something a little bit harder than that, but not much. But anyway, he would warm up every day to Metallica. And I was, I was like, gonna say Pink Floyd, world, yeah. How in the world are you listening to Metallica before you go out and go play golf? You know, but I mean that's that's what worked for him. And he was like, Okay, whatever gets you I don't know how that gets your rhythm and tempo working, but okay. <laughs> Well, you know, they always say we all have our own little beat that we that we go to and, yeah, uh, yeah. and they're not they're not always the same, that's for sure. I love, you know, that you have this music prescription builder, is that yeah. correct? Yeah. I am so into the whole social engagement and social care that I don't think is being compensated or talked about the way it needs to be. I think the last couple of years we're hearing it bubble to the top more, but it isn't always a pill, you know, that can, that can help us. Granted, it's probably going to be the cure, you know, but it's not always the care right? in my eyes. And I think the care piece is so, so important to be able to provide that in a dignified fashion that's customized 
to the person and those around them as well. Well, how do you see that kind of expanding in the future? Do you see it, you know, opening up? I know you had mentioned that earlier with the pastoral care and and things. And I know CMS is uh, doing their dementia guide, which is supposed to pull more stuff right. in. What are your thoughts with all of that? You know, I mean, I, I think that personalized medicine, you know, it's a little bit of an overstated, you know, uh, statement these days, but, but it's, but it's not really used, you know, it's not, it's not part of when you, when you say personalized medicine, that generally means, well, what, you know, what, what prescription bottles do you have that are personalized for you? <laughs> But I, you know, there's just so much more than that, you know, that we alluded to earlier with this whole wellness movement. I mean, I think that personalized medicine is going to finally, over the next 10 or 20 years, you know, incorporate not just your, your, your medicine and your prescriptions that way, but all of these other different forms of care, you know, whether it's meditative, like your granddaughter was talking about, or, you know, it's, 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 um, you know, using different forms of engagement tools, you know, like health and fitness, obviously, is a huge one of those, um, you know, and, and um, you know, education is another huge one of those, and how all of that fits into the care plan. And, and I think it's going to go that way. I think you're already seeing it go that way. And I think that when you fast forward and, you know, referencing back to CMS, I think that part of the care plan is going to be, like you said, spiritual support, music support, fitness support, educational support, you know, it's going to be broader. I mean, that's our hope, right? I mean, that's why we're doing this. That's why we're pushing as hard as we're pushing and trying to figure out a way to get the rest of the world to pay attention, especially the CMS of the world. You know, I mean, we just, it's, it's just, and again, I think it comes down to our generation is going to force that to happen. And it's no longer going to be just this, you know, fringy thing. Yep. Yeah. I, I always kind of get on my pedestal and talk about, I wish pharma would include some of these things in their trials. So they would have the placebo, they'd have the pill, but then they'd have like a social engagement piece, you know, to see what, how, how does that affect? Because we know it changes the chemistry in the body. And right. so I would think that would change how someone reacts to a medication as well. And, you know, I'm not a medical person, I'm not a scientist, so what do I know? But I just think we could push things forward faster working together versus having lobbyists trying to squash things down and build things up. And right. uh, instead a lot of, of money, there's a lot of money. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's for sure. Well, why don't you tell us a little bit more about some of the new stuff that's happening? I know you've got cure radio. You mentioned the sing alongs and, and things, and then we can kind of get into the engagement bundle as well. Yeah, no, I would love to tell you about that. So we've got, you know, a lot of new products that we that we've released, obviously. So you, you mentioned two of them. So one is, um, you know, on the music first side, just starting there, you know, we're always adding, you know, more and more content, uh, more and more songs, more and more, you know, um, advanced technology to the music prescription builder but specifically you know turning back to customer wants and needs you know care radio is is was a result of our customers wanting something that was entertainment and not always just you know our core therapeutic wake sleep energy and relax programming and so you know we built out the radio product which was specifically designed to just be a genre based radio station really at the end of the day the only difference is, you know, we play, as you know, certain types of songs at certain times a day to support that. So it's different than just turning on a traditional radio. And then, you know, the sing-along product we talked about as well. So we've got about 1,000 to 1,500 specifically curated um, songs, you know, for, you know, I guess it's karaoke at the end of the day. We like to call it senior sing-along. But uh, that's because, you know, the key that we put the music in, the tempo that we play it in, and obviously the songs that we chose are specifically curated for for individuals, you know, in a in a in a long term care setting, or you know, at home, um, that are you know seventy plus probably would be the the the, the demographic that we're focused on, and so yeah, so those are on our side, and then um, you know, you mentioned the engagement bundle, I'm, I'm glad to talk about that if if you want me to as well. Yeah, please. I I do have one question for you before you go there, though, because we're seeing a lot more people with early onset you know, being diagnosed earlier, do you, or maybe you already have done this targeted some of those genres, because that's one of the things that they say is, you know, there's, 
there's not as much support for us who are younger um, right. in dealing with this. Is that is that something that you've incorporated? It is. We actually go all the way through the 2010s. So, you know, for we always say from Tony Bennett to Taylor Swift. So, um, you know, because because um, you have to. It's an unfortunate, you know, reality. And, um, you know, I've I've experienced personally and, and you know, um, that in, in with our customers and it's um, it's terrible. But I mean, you know, individuals even in their 40s and 50s, you know, we're starting to see it. And, you um, you know, I had a I had a gentleman that you know we were in, doing an installation. And this was ten years ago in a long term care community, and um, you know I thought he was a member of the staff. And you know he's sitting on a bench in a memory care wing, and and uh, I walked in, I introduced myself, just as nice as he could be, and went about my business and went back out to the truck to get you know some wires or whatever we were doing, and walked back in. He stood up and introduced himself again, and it just broke my heart. Yep, it's uh, it is happening more and more out there for people. That's for sure. Why don't you talk about the um, engagement bundle and what that's all about? Yeah, so um, you know, this is a project that we started about about eighteen months ago, and the the high level on it is there's there's about you know there's some really good content partners out there that are focused on engagement, and you know, obviously, what we do in music is wonderful. But there's a lot of other great uh, companies out there that are doing other areas. And so, you know, at the end of the day, you know, we looked around and we said, wow, there's so many great companies out there. We're all selling to the same people. We're all basically priced about the same. You know, why can't we get together and work together? And so, you know, we sat down and we said, there's got to be a way to, to do this. And so you know, we brought together at the end of, of the day, we brought together seven different companies and so Spyro 100 that focuses, as you know, on, on fitness and fall prevention and meditation. Um, you know, there's us, Coro, obviously. There's One Day University who, you know, provides lectures, education, and ins inspiration through, you know, lots of different types of content with uh, uh, professors from, you know, esteemed schools all over the world. Memory Bio, you probably know Beth very well. So, you know, she's all about nurturing conversations and creating connections you know, for individuals in, in, with memory issues. Um, and then we brought together Fotavia, uh, which has these beautiful artists and immersive remembrance content. Um, you know, it's just absolutely gorgeous what they put together uh, photographically and visually um, and with songs as well. And then Discover Live, who they do both live and on-demand world tours. And they just have you know, amazing amount of content from and individuals that are literally going around the world. And, you know, this is great for reminiscence as well, you know, trying to remember what was it like when we were in Paris or what was it like we went to Spain or I've never been there and I've always wanted to and, and you know, creating that uh, that journey. And so we brought everybody together um, and then we put it on a single technology platform with this company called Quilt um, so that it allows us to have a single sign on for everybody from a technical standpoint that allows our content to, to seamlessly integrate with a calendar so that you can go on there and literally say, you know, I want to listen to, uh, uh, you know, Coral Health at two o'clock on Wednesday and I want to listen to a lecture or watch a lecture, you know, from one day university at noon on Thursdays. And, you know, I want to conduct a fitness class on noon. You know, you can just drop it into the calendar and it automatically comes up and plays at those times of day. So it was really um, a cool opportunity. And so there's three different bundles that we offer. The original bundle, which has Spyro, Coro, and One Day University. And then the memory bundle, which is specifically for those that have, you know, communities that have memory care or individuals that are trying to support those with having some sort of Alzheimer's dementia or related disorder. So that includes Spyro, Coro, uh, Memory Bio, and Fotavia. And then we have the Premier Bundle, which has all seven in one. And so, um, you know, it's a great opportunity, you know, to, to, to get access to the content. Um, we offer huge discounts on it. I mean, each one of those individually sell for about $100 per month per, 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 per user there. And so you can bundle it up and you can get them, you know, for a fraction of the price up to 70% off on all of them. So if you buy them all together, so it's a really inexpensive, great way to get the best companies in the entire industry that offer engagement content. Wow. That's fantastic. And is it specifically for communities versus let's say home health care or individuals living at home? 
It's definitely covers both. As a matter of fact, we're working right now with uh, a couple of very large home care uh, companies that um, we're going to be launching and, and announcing relationships with here in the next few months. So it's absolutely both. Fantastic. Oh, my gosh. Now, is there anything we haven't covered? Because we've covered a lot of ground here today. Gosh, we have covered a lot. I, I don't. Uh, I don't think so. I think you you <laughs> you picked my brain in just about every <laughs> category that I can imagine. So uh, we even covered some personal stuff before we got on the phone. So we got on. So yeah, I think uh, I think I think we've covered it. Wonderful. Well, Dave, I I really appreciate your time with us today, and and more so, I I appreciate all you're doing to change dementia care out there. I just think it's absolutely fabulous your your insights your motivation your your passion to really make a difference um just shines through and i love your collaborative heart you know pulling others together i i just think makes an easier path for everyone and i think it allows us to serve people faster and better as well and so again thank you uh, so much as always i like to ask our listeners to be a giver of hope and like, click, and share this episode. You never know who's in your sphere on Facebook or LinkedIn or Twitter or wherever you're connected, um, who is looking for this information. Might be a little shy at reaching out. Might be somebody that you know, that, but that you don't know is even dealing with dementia or having questions about looking for support because people still keep this as a really private conversation and we have to change that. We have to make things easier for people to find. So please take that second, you know, it doesn't cost you any money and takes very little time to make a difference in someone else's life by sharing information that is just critical. Again, you can go to a coralhealth.com, which is their website. You can find them on Facebook at Coral Health TX. Um, they are on Instagram as Coral Health, also um, on X or Twitter, YouTube, and LinkedIn, all as Coral Health as well. So thanks, everybody. We appreciate you so much in helping us build our community. And again, Dave, I can't wait to have you on again and hear what hear what will be new next time when we talk. Well, thank you so much. And thank you for all that you do. You're, you're an amazing person and, and all that you offer is an amazing resource to so many people. So I can't thank you enough. Thanks, everybody. We'll talk soon. Bye-bye.